Language barriers are a thing of the past. Mayday, mayday. Hello, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can you... Okay, over. We are sinking. We are sink. Hello? This is the German Coast Guard. We are sinking. We're sinking. What are you thinking about? Alright, maybe not just yet. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can use Watson language translation to convert text into different languages. We're also going to be building an AI powered travel assistant. Want to learn more? Let's take a look at what we're going through in greater detail. So we're going to be covering everything you need to get up and started to translate languages. Specifically, we're going to be taking a look at how we can translate text from one language to another, as well as how to use different language models. We'll then also look at how we can identify different languages from a piece of text. And last but not least, we're going to be building an AI powered travel assistant. So we'll be able to take text from one language, convert it to another, and then generate the speech for that as well. So this is going to allow us to speak in English and convert all the way through to generating speech in a different language. So in terms of how we're going to be doing it, we're going to be capturing text using Python inside of a Jupyter Notebook. We'll then take that text, send it to the Watson language translator service to convert it into a different language. Likewise, we'll also do a similar thing in order to identify languages. And in order to build our AI powered travel assistant, we'll take that same text, first convert it to a different language, and then we'll take that converted text, send it to our text to speech service in order to generate our AI powered speech. Ready to get to it? Let's do it. So we're gonna be working inside of Jupyter Notebooks for this. Now there's four key steps that we need to go through. These are authenticating, translating, identifying languages, and then last but not least, we're also going to make an AI travel guide. Now, before we actually get to authenticating, we need to install some dependencies. And the main dependency that we need is IBM Watson. Perfect, so that's our main dependency installed. So in order to install it, all we needed to do was type in exclamation mark, pip install IBM Watson. That's all done and dusted. Now what we can get to doing is authenticating. So let's just minimize this and create a few cells underneath our authenticate tab. And in order to authenticate, we first need to set up a service. So specifically, we're gonna be setting up a Watson language translation service. In order to do that, it's pretty easy. All we need to do is go to cloud.ibm.com forward slash catalog, then hit services. And then from down here, you can see that we've got a category called AI machine learning. So if we select that, there's going to be a heap of services. Now, the one that we're specifically looking for is language translator. So select language translator. And then as soon as the language translator service page comes up, you can choose which type of service you want. So for this particular video, we're going to be working with the light tier and that's more than enough if you're just getting started. So it allows you to translate up to a million characters per month, more than enough to get through this. So let's choose light and hit create. So once this service has been created, we're going to get an API key as well as a URL. So these are gonna be the two things that we need in order to go and translate. So you can see that we've now set up our service. All we need to do is select manage from over here and we'll have our API key as well as our URL. So let's create two variables to hold those inside of our Jupyter Notebook. So one, our API key and two for our URL. And then what we can do is copy those into our notebook. Now that's done and dusted. So we won't need to step into the cloud.ibm page until we get back to our AI travel guide. So everything from here on out is mainly going to be inside of our Jupyter Notebook. Now the next thing that we wanna do is import our dependency. So in this case, we're going to need to import the text translation service as well as our authenticators. Boom, that's done. So we've imported two key dependencies there. So the first one is our language translator class. So this is going to allow us to set up an instance of our language translator. And we've brought that in from IBM Watson. And we've also imported the IAM authenticator class. So this is going to allow us to authenticate against our language translation service. Now, the next thing that we wanna do is actually authenticate.
So we've now gone and set up our service. Now what we did is we used the IAM Authenticator class and we passed through our API key. So that allows us to now use that Authenticator to go and authenticate against our language translation service. Did somebody say Authenticate? Now within our language translation service, we've also specified our version. So in this case, it's the 1st of May, 2018. And we've also passed through our Authenticator class that we just set up here. So this means that our service is going to, oh, screwed that up. So this means that our service is going to be accessible through the LT variable. And last but not least, we set our service URL. So this URL is basically the URL that we set up here and it specifies where our service is in the World Wide Web. So that's pretty much it for authenticating. Now what we can actually go and do is start translating. So say for example, we wanted to translate uh, hello world, for example, pretty simple. Let's go and do that. Now, in this particular case, we've got a bunch of different languages that we can actually translate from. Now, I'll include these links in the description below so you've got access to all of these, but you can see that there are a whole heap of supported languages that you can use within the Watson service. So for example, say we wanted to translate Hello World from English to German, for example, similar to what we saw our Coast Guard do at the start of the video. Well, what we need to do is pass through a combination of these language codes. So say for example, we wanted to convert English to German, then we'd pass through English, which is I believe EN up here. So you can see we've got EN, and then if we wanted to convert it to German, then we pass through the second parameter as DE. So ideally what you get is something like this, EN dash DE. So that basically means that our language translator is now going to convert an English text, so hello world, from English to German. Then all we need to do is type in get result. And that's our translation done. Now, if we go and pass that out, you can see that our model has converted hello world to hello welt. I don't exactly have a German accent, but you kind of get the idea. Now, say for example, we wanted to translate a longer body of text. Well, what we can do is just change this text here to whatever we wanted to do. So say for example, uh, we wanted to pass through, uh, we are syncing you've now got the translation stored here. Now, if we wanted to actually access that specific piece of text, what we can do is traverse our translation object. And you can now see that we're extracting the translation we are syncing. So this might have actually helped our submariner or our navy at the start of the video to ideally get the right message across. Now, if we take a look at what we actually did for our translate service, what we basically did is we grabbed our language translation service from up here and then used the translate method to actually go and translate our text. We then passed through the text that we want to translate as well as the model. So that was that code that we took a look at here. So basically we combined English with German in order to perform that conversion. And last but not least, we use the get result method to actually go and perform that translation and grab the result back. Now, another cool feature that you've got within the Watson translation service is the ability to identify languages. So say for example, we didn't want to translate text, we actually wanted to go and identify a specific language. Well, we can do that as well. So in order to do that, we're going to run through a similar method to what we did up here for lt.translate. Rather, this time we're going to use lt.identify to identify a language. So we've now gone and tried to identify the language that's stored within this sentence here. Now we can obviously see that that is English, but let's take a look at how Watson language translation is performed. So if we go and pass out our language, it's giving us all of our different confidence intervals. And pretty clearly it's identified English as the most likely prediction. So you can see it's got a confidence of about 99.99%. Now what happens if we were to try to identify this particular line of text here? So ideally what you'd wanna see is that it's able to identify that that's German. So let's try that out. And there you go. So it's actually gone and predicted that it's German with a reasonable degree of confidence. So DE being the language code for German, and our confidence in this case is about 94.8%. So what we actually did there is we used the language translation service again, but this time we used the identify method, again, passing through our text and using get result to identify language rather than just translate. Now, the last thing that we might wanna do is actually do a two-part conversion. And this is where we get to our AI travel guide. So say we wanted to convert a piece of text and then actually generate the speech from that text. Well, we can actually stack these services together to one, go and convert our text from one language to another, 
and then two, take that text and convert it to speech. So this basically allows us to have a bit of a travel guide. So for example, our Navy sailors could have gone and typed in, we are sinking into German, converted that to German text, and then had that German text converted to speech so that he could pass it through to our Coast Guard. So now let's go on ahead and take a look at how we can go and build our AI travel guide. In order to do that, we need to set up one additional service inside of our IBM Cloud account. The service that we actually need to bring in is the text to speech service. So let's go and set that up quickly. Again, all we need to do is capture our API key and our URL for that service. So before we actually go and set that up, let's just set up those two variables. So we'll set one up for speech to text API key and speech to text URL. All right, so we've got two new variables, so STT API key and STT URL. Let's go and set up the service. So in order to do that, we're going to be going to cloud.ibm.com, then just hit catalog. And again, we're going to be selecting services and choosing AI machine learning, which we've got here. Then from there, rather than choosing language translator this time, we're going to be choosing text to speech, which is this one here. So again, you can see it synthesizes natural sounding speech from text. So let's choose that. And similar to what we did for our language translation service, we're going to be choosing the light plan, which allows us to convert 10,000 characters per month. So let's choose that one and hit create. Now, again, as soon as this service is finished creating, we're going to be able to extract the API key and the URL. So let's choose manage and then grab our API key and paste it back into our Jupyter notebook. And let's grab our URL as well. So you can just grab the API key and the URL just by hitting copy, these little copy symbols. So that will allow you to copy them. So we'll just grab our URL and paste that in as well. Alrighty, so we've got our variables. Now what we wanna go and do is authenticate against our speech to text service. So this is going to follow a similar process to what we did up here for our language translation service. So in order to do that, we first need to import our dependencies. So that's our text-to-speech class imported. So this is basically going to operate in a similar manner to our language translation service SDK that we brought up here. Now what we're going to do is go through those authentication steps again. Oh, I should actually point out that we're actually using the text-to-speech service. So we've actually called it STT here. So let's just update these. This should be text-to-speech, text-to-speech. It's just a naming convention. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's still going to work. All right, so now that we've changed those, let's go and rerun that cell and let's authenticate. All right, so we've now gone and authenticated. So again, what we've done is we've created a new instance of our IAM authenticator. Then we've set up our text-to-speech SDK. So we've created a new class of the text-to-speech service and pass through our authenticator. And then last but not least, we've set our service URL. So this is that URL that we just set up here. Now what we can go and do is perform our AI travel guide function. So say for example, we actually wanted to convert our English speech. So we are syncing to German first and then convert that from text to speech. So let's go on ahead and do that. So the first thing that we've gone and done is created a translation. So we've gone and converted, we are syncing, please send help. And we've passed through our model ID for English to German. Now what we need to do is extract that piece of text first up. All right, so we've actually extracted our text. Now the next step, so this is where we actually take that text and convert it to speech. So we've now gone and taken our text, which we had here and converted it to speech. Let's quickly go through this. So I actually covered this in greater detail in another video, but we'll quickly run through it again. So we've set up a new file called help.mp3. So this is going to be the file that we write out. Then we've used the text-to-speech.synthesize method to go and convert our text to speech. So we're also going to be outputting it to audio-mp3 and we're using a specific voice. So whenever we're using the text-to-speech method, you've got a whole bunch of supported languages and voices. 
So in this case, what we can do is choose the voice that we want. So I've chosen Bridget, so that's a German voice. There's also a whole bunch of others as well. Now, the last thing that we've gone and done is we've output our speech to an audio file. So if we go into our folder, you can see that we've got a file called help. So if we go and play that, Wir sinken. Bitte senden Sie Hilfe. that's our converted speech. So we've now gone and taken English text, converted that to German and then converted it to German speech. Now, say, for example, we wanted to use a different language. Well, all we need to do is change our first up our model ID. So say, for example, we wanted to convert to Chinese. Well, let's delete DE, then find our Chinese language model. So you can see here that we've got Chinese simplified and Chinese traditional. So we'll grab simplified. Then we just need to paste that there. So you can see now that rather than converting from English to German, we've now gone and converted from English to Chinese and we've got our Chinese translation. Now, if we wanted to go and convert this speech again, all we need to do is change our voice model. So if we go to our voice model, there should be a Chinese voice model. You can see we've got a Mandarin one, then let's grab one of these. So say for example, we wanted Li Na's voice, we can grab that language model and change our voice model here. And now if we scroll over back into our folder, we should have a language translation that rather than being from English to German is now from English to Chinese. And there you go. So we've covered quite a fair bit in this video. So we've authenticated against our service. We've also translated our text to speech and use a bunch of different language models. So we did English to German here and we also did English to Chinese down here. We also use the identify function to allow us to identify different languages in text. And then last but not least, we created an AI travel guide. So we first up converted our text in one language to text in a different language. And then we used that translated text to convert it to speech to allow us to bridge with different cultures. So that about wraps up this video. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell so you get notified of any future videos. If you've got any problems at all, be sure to drop a mention in the comments below and I'll get right back to you ASAP. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.